which is exposed to the vagina. It is not in the pelvis, it's exposed to the vagina. It has two parts, endocervix, which is the cervical canal, which consists of cuboidal epithelium, and the ectocervix, which is, which is the cervix, part of the cervix, which is exposed to the vagina, which is made up of... Recording in progress. Which is made up of uh, squamous cells. So in the cervical canal is cuboidal cell, the, the ectocervix, the outside, which is exposed to the vagina is squamous. So it has uh, two, two entrances, inter external os and the internal os. External os is the os which is in contact with the vagina, the internal os connects the cervix to the endometrial cavity. And around this external loss, the squamous epithelium and the cuboidal epithelium meets together. And this is the place, the cervical cancer origin. So cervical cancer is the commonest gynecological cancer in females. Commonest cancer in the genital type. Now we have cancers of the ovary, the fallopian tube, uterus, vagina, and the external genitalia, which is called the vulva. But out of all gynecological cancers in the genital tract, cervix is the commonest cancer. Cervix is the commonest cancer. Okay. So, so now I told you, learn the anatomy and the histology of the cervix is extremely important. Anatomy included the tissues which the cervix is made of and the lymphatic drainage and the blood supply and the nerve attachments. So you need to know the anatomy very well. And the histology, histology I told you, external loss is made up of squamous cell, internal cervical canal is made up of cuboid cell. And they meet each other at the external loss. And that meeting place is called the transformation zone. Why is it called the transformation zone? It's called the squamo-columnar junction. So, why is it called the transformation zone? The cuboidal epithelium now undergo metaplasia, squamous metaplasia at this junction. Metaplasia is conversion of one type of epithelium to another type of epithelium. So one type of epithelium, the cuboidal epithelium, is converted to squamous epithelium. Learn about the blood supply and the lymphatic drainages. What are the benign abnormalities in the cervix? So these are things which you need to know about the cervix. This is the entire syllabus of the cervix. So you know, cervical cancer is a preventable cancer. How do you prevent it? By doing regular pap smears. So what is a pap smear? You take a the square. Have you seen a pap smear being done? <laughs> Hello. Have you seen a yes. pap smear? Yes. yes so the pap smear is taken around the external loss where there are squamous, the transformation zone. And the normal epithelial cells look like this. But abnormal cells, you can see here, it's a large nucleus and there are nucleoli here. And the nucleus cytoplasmic ratio is altered. And you see hyperchromasia. The nucleus is darkly stained, hyperchromasia. So pap smear is, is, is done from the external loss. And this is the slide of a pap smear. So pap smear, what do you see in the pap smear? A, a clump of cells. So pap smear is a cytological diagnosis. Pap smear is a cytological diagnosis. So now, 
So now these are now, now cervical, before the cervical cancer originate, there is a precancerous phase which originates. Precancerous phase, and we call it cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, CIN1. And it is graded CIN1, CIN2, CIN3 for mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia, and severe dysplasia. So these cells in CIN1, that mild dysplasia, moderate, has this characteristic which I just told you. A large nucleus, mitotic figures are common, dark stain. The severity is graded from grade one to grade three. And this is the grade one, grade two, grade three. Now I'll show you why, how do you differentiate between grade one, grade two, and grade three. Now this is a slide. This is the normal epithelium. The most important etiological factor of cervical cancer is the papillomavirus. So the papillomavirus enters the cervical cells. And this is CIN1. This is the basement membrane. Only one third of the epithelium above the basement membrane is involved. That is CIN1. Here, two thirds of the epithelium is in CIN2. This is the whole epithelium is in CIN3. And if the basement membrane is infiltrated or pierced, it is a cancer. Now, there are stromal tissues here with blood vessels and lymphatics. Now, cervical cancer is. Sorry, and this uh, cervical intraepithelial lesion, we call it CIN1, CIN2, CIN3. And then there's a new classification, which is called the Bethesda classification. So CIN1 is in, in Bethesda classification is called a low seal lesion. Low seal means low squamous intraepithelial lesion. CIN2 and CIN3 both combined is called the high C lesion, high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. And these are all due to, uh, so the etiology of cervical cancer, definitive etiology of cervical cancer is the presence of human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus, remember that. So it is only etiology. So in human papilloma virus is a sexually transmitted virus. So epidemiology, 90% of the abnormalities below 45 years. So natural history. HPV is a relatively small virus. It's a DNA virus. It has a shell, big shell here. And there's a viral part. This is a capsid. It's a DNA virus, very small virus. And then the causal role of papillomavirus infection in cervical cancer has been documented beyond reasonable doubt. There's no doubt, 100% it's due to HPV. Right. So this is what is important. And then what are the other risk factors to develop HPV? If you have multiple sexual partners, then this, this as if it is a sexually transmitted virus, it can infect. If the, if the husband has multiple sexual partners, if the female partner has multiple sexual partners, then even smoking, the women who smokes for a long time, they can have, they are more prone to get cervical cancer. And then Early marriages, if you are married, married, very early age, we'll say teenage pregnancy, teenage marriage, between 15 and 20, 20 years, 15 and 20 years. Then the cervix is immature, the cells are immature, then high chances of giving HPV infection. So early marriage, then they say, uh, the circumcision gives a protection because the husband should 
give the virus certain concessions, give the protection. I don't know how well it is, but they have observed if a patient is circumcised, the female part is circumcised, there is, there is no protection. So this is the normal cervix. This is the sequence again, infected with HPV. Then there's persistent infection. Then the precancerous stages, CIN1, CIN2, CIN3, and the cervical cancer. And this progression, CIN1 lesions, there is 90% chance of CIN1 lesions becoming normal. 90% chance if you leave them alone. Then there is 60% chance of CIN2 to become normal. Then there is 30% chance of CIN3 to become normal. So that does mean that not all CIN lesion progresses to cancer. There is reversible reaction as well. This way, CIN1, 90% reverses. This way, CIN2, 60% reverses. This way, CIN3, 30% reverses. And even if it progress, it, pro it progress taken months and years to develop a pre-cancer, then a cancer. Sometimes it's 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So if the patient is infected with HPV at the age of 30 years, she might develop the cancer at the age of 45 years. It's a long duration. So the natural history is very prolonged. So how does it happen? When there's a virus particle from the surface epithelium of the cervix, then there's a breach here. It goes down, right down. Into the, into the basal cell and then comes up and then CIN1, then CIN2, then CIN3. The virus is multiplying inside the cells and then next phase is, is multiplies and then it infects another, another type of another area and then so there are lots of virus particles being formed with one multiplication. Risk factors, multiple sexual partners, history of STD, smoking, long-term oral contraceptive pill usage. This is a little controversial because, because if a patient is on contraceptive pill in Western countries, they are not worried about pregnancy. They obviously they have multiple sexual partners and the immunosuppression. If you have HIV and long-term steroid treatment, then there's high chance. And here, last one, low socioeconomic status. So there is a there is nutritional deficiencies. When the immunity goes down with the nutritional deficiencies, then she's getting she can get more viral infection. Diagnosis. Screening for cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a preventable cancer. It's a preventable cancer. Right. Screening is performed with cervical smears. You can take cervical, have you seen cervical smears? You have seen. And then learn the eligibility criteria for screening. Anybody who is married should have a smear done once in three years until 65 years. So that is a criteria. And learn the method of screening. You need to learn the methods of screening. How to screen, how to do a pap smear. So this is a this one you saw it earlier. Then this is what's happening. So this is I said, this is a CIN3 lesion from this base one membrane, and it's going up and up and up and up and up, up to the surface of the so you can see dark staining nucleus and then hyperchromasia. And the nucleus cytoplasmic ratio is altered. The entire nucleus is filled with the nucleus. The entire cell is filled with the nucleus. Management of abnormal smear. So I said if the patient is if the patient is uh, every, it's done every three years. If the pap smear is normal, you say, if you do the pap smear today, if it is normal, it will be repeated in three years' time. If it is mild CI, I told you mild, 90% reverses, and then you repeat this in six months' time. Most of the CI will reverse back to normal. If it is still present, 
then you do a call, procedure called the colposcope. I'll let you know what this colposcope is. The borderline changes, repeat in six month time, if still persists, a colposcope. The moderate changes, mild moderate, two thirds of the epithelium is involved, you need a colposcope. Severe changes, you need a colposcope. So they are colposcopic indications. Yeah, colposcope. If it is normal, then you repeat in three years' time. What is a colposcope? Colposcope is a standing microscope which can magnify the cervical structure. Standing microscope, like the mind that now you have in the pathology table microscope, is a standing microscope. So learn how to do a colposcope. You can learn when you are doing appointments, colposcope. Then, when you do a colposcope, before you magnify the cervix, we put a solution of acetic acid. Acetic acid. Acetic acid is normal vinegar. Vinagit. 3% vinegar. When you put acetic acid into the cervix, the abnormal area in the cervix absorbs acetic acid. Absorb acetic acid and they look like white areas. And if you if there is white areas, when you do colposcope, you know those are abnormal areas. So these are called acetovite areas. Yeah, this is acetovite area. This is acetovite area. These are abnormal areas which you observe. So when you see acetovite area, how do you manage this patient? Management. You can then, these are not, these are pre malignant still. So you excise this acetovite area. These are called excisional measures. Or you can destroy this. There are many methods to destroy excision or destruction. Yeah. Excisional methods. And that is called the large do. Excision of transamation. So that means with a wire loop, you excise with a connected machine, dietary machine, you excise. Destructive method, there are three methods. You like cold coagulation, you freeze the tissues to zero degrees and then destroy. Then coagulation, electrocoagulation, you heat up the tissues to 100 degrees and then destroy or by laser energy. So there are two methods to treatment of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, excisional methods and destructive methods. So this is this is a type of a cancer, high grade, high grade lesion. There are acetovite areas, big acetovite area. This is a cancer, invasive cancer. You can see there are necrotic areas. There is a large tumor here. This is a cervical cancer. So this is a high grade CIN1. See, this is CIN3 high grade, and then leading to cancer. Yeah, there are. So this is the excisional method which I told you with a diatomy blue. You excise, and this area is being fully excised away, and then you can send it for biopsy. Excisional method, which is called the large blue excision of transamation zone. So prevention of cervical cancer. How do you prevent? By vaccine. So then now there's cervical cancer vaccination. It's called the primary prevention. Primary prevention, why? It produces antibody in the patient and then prevent the virus entering the body. Now cervical smear is a secondary prevention. Yeah. Virus has entered and we are diagnosis the entered virus to the abnormalities, pap smear abnormalities. So it's a secondary prevention. So HPV vaccination is a primary prevention. Or health education, you educate the younger generation and the population and tell them about the it's a sexual transmitted virus and a cancer. Sexual transmitted cancer. So Having what sex education, importance of having 
sex education and then barrier contraception sex education and barrier contraception how do you counsel a patient with abnormal skin how do you counsel a patient with abnormal skin now how many types of vaccinations are available there are two types of vaccination what are those two types there are bivalent vaccine and quadrivalent vaccine bivalent and quadrivalent vaccine bivalent vaccine is has now hpv i told you say it's due to hpv is a virus not there are about 100 subtypes of hpv 100 subtypes of hpv out of which few subtypes are cancerous what are those subtypes HPV 16 and 18. HPV 16 and 18 are their cancers. So now bivalent vaccine has antibodies, produce antibodies against HPV 16 and 18. Quadrivalent vaccine has produced antibodies against HPV 16, 18, 6 and 11. What is 6 and 11? Anybody? Anybody in the audience know what is 6 and 11? Uh, the viral uh, serotypes which produces genital walls. Genital walls. Very good. Very good. Good brain. Genital walls. So, genital, these are genital walls. Genital walls also are sexually transmitted. So, this has immunity against. HPV 16 and 18, which produces cancers, and then HPV 6 and 11, which produces benign genital walls. So, anybody, now all of you had the HPV vaccination. Now it is being included in the extended immunization, immunization program in the country. All grade six, six children in the schools are being vaccinated for HPV. All grade six children. Of course, you were not there at that time, but it's available commercial. The cost of the vaccine is about three thousand. So anybody, all of you should have the HPV vaccination done. Very important. It prevents cervical cancer for you in the future. If you have three doses, it's the lifelong vaccine. It's a lifelong vaccine. So all of you should have. All of you in this sense, especially the male, females, should have HPV vaccination. You can have it because you are not eligible now to have it from the government. Even to only year six children. But you can have it commercially, it is available and it's 3,000. Okay. So, so, this is the leading types of cancers. You can see the cervix. We have annually about 800 to 1,000 cases of cervical cancer. It is only second to breast. Breast is the commonest and followed by cervix. These are other cancers in the females. So when you say cancers, it is cervical cancer is common in the reproductive age group from year 30 years to 45 years, for 60 years. Mainly the peak is in the reproductive years. Late reproductive, 45, 49. Late reproductive. It's a reproductive cancer. So you can see, if you get the cancer somewhere, there virus, the cancer will here, be here at about 50 years. It's the commonest gynecological cancer, I told you. This incident is 13 per 100,000. Now, this is, the, this is the symptoms of the cancer. Precancers does not cause any symptoms. Precancers does not metastasize. It doesn't spread anywhere. It is only located in the cervix. Now, this is the cancer. What are the irregular vaginal bleeding, offensive vaginal discharge? If you are menopause, postmenopausal bleeding. If the rectum is involved, rectal bleeding. If the bladder is involved, hematuria and the pain. 
And on examination, there may be also a growth in the cervix. How to examine the cervix? By speculum examination. So the spread, learn the spread and the FIGO staging of cervical cancer. Remember that. FIGO staging, I told you earlier, FIGO is International Method of Staging of Cancer, Federation of International Gynecological Gynecologic Obstetrics. So there is a staging. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. All of you should know staging of cervical cancer. So when you see a cancer, then you need to do a biopsy. So biopsy is done after admitting the patient. Biopsy is done. Then cervical cancer is staged by clinical examination. And therefore the staging is called the clinical stage. Where do you examine? When you do an examination under anesthesia, in the theater. So examine in the theater under anesthesia. And then you say, this is the stage of the disease. So it's called the clinical stage. So there are other investigations which are helpful, like the MRI CT scan to stage the disease. But it's mainly a cancer which is being examined and then staged. So examination under anesthesia when you are doing a biopsy in the theater. Treatment. Right. So treatment, cervical cancer. I told you about this. This is microinvasion, just a few millimeters below the basement membrane. So when it causes symptoms, the infiltration is somewhere there. So this is microinvasion. So this is microinvasion is also taken as a method of staging. Microinvasion. That means just beyond the basement membrane. Then you can treat them with a cold biopsy or normal hysterectomy. But if it is stage one, up to stage two, A, remember, go home and read stage, stage, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. So up to stage one, from stage one to stage two, A, the choice is either you do surgery or you can give a combination of chemotherapy and radiation, chemo radiation. If it is surgery, the procedure is called the radical hysterectomy, and you have to remove the pelvic nodes also. What are these pelvic nodes? The nodes around the external iliac artery, internal iliac artery, and the obturator. So radical hysterectomy and pelvic node dissection. That's a type surgery. And it's commonly called the world times hysterectomy. World times hysterectomy. Word times is a person's name who is supposed to done this hysterectomy for the first time. So you have to know what is a simple hysterectomy. Simple hysterectomy is we do for five tries. Difference between simple and radical. Sometimes we can remove the cervix only, which is called the trachelectomy. And those are done in younger patients for fertility sparing. To preserve fertility, you can remove the cervix only. So, so I told you stage stage one to stage two A, either surgery or chemo radiation. Then stage two B and above, only chemo radiation. So the chemotherapy of choice is platinum based chemotherapy, cis platinum or carboplatin. You have learned this in pharmacology. Platinum based chemotherapy, so either cis platin or carboplatin. Okay, so these are any questions you have now. So we will be doing this again staging, how to do a UA in the ward when you come to the ward as a clinical. This is the theoretical knowledge you need to know about this cervical cancer, being the commonest. 13 per 100,000 incidents, those things. Commonest guidelines, pap smears, it's prevention, and then 
how do you classify pap smears and the treatment of pre invasive diseases and then treatment of cervical cancer anything you have in the mind so rest will be learning in the wards when you come for the clinicals any other thing you want to you have to know any 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 questions you have don't get i not confused to this very basic example what is transemission zone the cancer originate from the transemission zone those are the, but pathology we have done adenocarcinoma squamous cell carcinoma incidence and we have shown all these things pathology so this is the clinical aspect of cervical cancer and then more clinical aspects we can learn in the computer box any questions you have so there are two questions in the chat uh, shall i read it sir hmm? uh, there are two uh, there are two questions in the chat sir shall i read it yes uh, so, ask me ask me now uh, sir once virus infected cells what cause it to reverse what causes it to reverse the immunity problem. if you are immune very immune healthy person or some nutrition the virus cannot progress further then it reverses immunity uh, so And next question is uh, so can you explain what is meant by micro invasion again how is it different from stage 1 Yeah, micro invasion is infiltration up to five millimeters from the basement, and it is still microscopic. You cannot stage one is macroscopic. Micro invasion is microscopic. Five millimeters from the base membrane is micro invasion. Anything more than five millimeters deep, we don't call that micro invasion. So, who diagnoses the micro invasion for you? Hello, who diagnoses it? The pathologist. Pathologist diagnoses it because it's, it's microscopic. Any uh, other question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, next question is, uh, sir, which type of HPV vaccine, bivalent or quadrivalent, used in national schedule? Quadrivalent. Uh, sir, what is done in radical uh, trachylectomy? Uh, trachylectomy you do you remove the cervix radical trachylectomy remove the cervix and the pelvic lymph nodes cervix and the pelvic we do lap trachylectomies because we preserve the uterus for her to have babies fertility that is called the fertility sparing if you do a radical hysterectomy you are removing the uterus no? but here you are only removing the cervix and preserving the uterus for future fertility uh, another question sir can uh, cin3 considered as carcinoma in situ cin3 considered as carcinoma in situ yes uh, that's all sir thank you then we will do so this is what you need to know don't get confused when you go home read the staging only that's all you need to do it when you go to home right okay then wish you all the best huh? thank you sir